Here's the speaker for that Zenith, and uh, I've been making some repairs on it, and I use the typical method that I think everyone, just about everyone else uses. This is probably the best method there is, and that I use a diluted mix of Aline's Tacky Glue. This is really good stuff, and I buy a pretty good sized jug of it because I, I wind up doing a lot of speaker repairs. And uh, this stuff is good. What you do is you dilute it in water. So I just use, you know, a cup that I can, I can live without. And I dilute it in, you know, dilute it in some water in this cup. And I'll tell you what I do with it in just a second. But you see, there it is. It's about the thickness of real thin sour cream or maybe coffee creamer. Anyhow, I dilute it in water. I tear off, I don't cut, I tear off some uh, bit of coffee filter. I'll cut the piece generally the size I want and then I tear the edges and the reason I want to do that is I want the fibers to be, I want some free fibers, some loose fibers so that they can kind of knit themselves using the glue into the fibers of the paper. It works a lot better, you get a lot smoother look to it if you use torn paper. And so I, uh, when I do that, then I'll take the tacky glue, one of these cheap, you know, Harbor Freight brushes, you dip it in the glue and then you come over and you, and you get the speaker kind of wet with it. Not like sopping wet where it's running down the speaker. You don't want it to run down into the where the voice coil is. That'd be kind of bad. You just get it damp and you let that sit for just, oh, I don't know, a few minutes. This is what I do. What you do may be different. What everyone else does may be different. This is what works for me. So you get the speaker damp with it. Kind of, you know, about twice the size of the area you want to do. You can kind of see the dark area here where I got the speaker wet. Same thing down here. This was a real tiny hole. This was a hole you can kind of see the white area where the hole is. There you go. That kind of shows where the hole is. Same thing there. So anyway, you get the speaker wet, you brush on the glue, you let it soak in a bit, let it dry just a tiny bit to get a little stickier. And then you take the paper that you've torn, see how it's torn on the edges, you take that paper and you, you brush the glue on the paper and get it good and wet and then once you you've done that you take the paper and what I do is I lay down one side of the paper first the whole thing will lay down but I really I kind of start on one side and I start brushing and smoothing it out kind of like doing a decal on a model airplane and you get in between the grooves real patiently by brushing along there we go brushing along with the brush to, to kind of push it down into the paper into the, sh the to conform with the shape of the cone the same thing with here you kind of brush 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 and you work your way toward the other side that way you don't have bubbles in the middle now what will happen in this area that has nothing underneath it is it'll look like it's going to kind of bubble up and it won't look very good but the neat thing about this is is when that water dries when the water because the tacky glue is water soluble when that water dries that paper will shrink up a little bit and start to conform to the shape that's around it it won't be perfect you can see that's not perfect but it's pretty good and this tacky glue is still pretty flexible when it's completely dry that's why it's good for speaker repairs I've seen people coat and you know soak an entire speaker with it and let it dry, and that speaker is still flexible enough and works quite well. This is not needed on this one, and I and uh, it would I just don't want to risk getting it down into the, anything down into that uh, where the voice coil is. So you know when that dries, it shrinks up a little bit. That that shrunk up nice and tight. You can see it conforms to the shape of the speaker quite well. Now this one down here I had to be real careful with, again, that voice coil. I don't want any glue getting anywhere near that. So I was really careful. My brush was rather dry when I did that. And I got the paper wet, but I made sure all the excess was gone. I laid the paper down and did the same process where you're just touching on the end and brushing out, brushing out, brushing out, starting at one end and working toward the other end. Works really well. It got the paper nice and as tight as it can be when it's wet. And then when it dries, it shrinks up and conforms beautifully. Now that I've done that, I'm going to take a little bit of the tacky glue, get the brush wet with it again, get the brush wet, and get rid of the excess. You don't want a lot of glue dripping around in that speaker. All you need is damp. Okay, and then I'm going to go over, let's start with this hole here. 
and you see I'm going to get it wet again. See how there's quite a bit on that brush and you have to be real careful. So one thing I do is I'll take a scrap piece of paper and I'll brush a lot of the excess off. Okay, so I just want to get it damp again just so I can make it just sort of ruggedize it some. And once this side dries, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, this glue um, is, like I said, very flexible. But, if you know, you have to be careful about it because it's water-based. You want it, it'll want to be runny. And it doesn't dry as fast as some, some uh, you know, solvent-based stuff is. So you just sort of get it wet again, get it wet again. Make sure that you don't get it so wet that you loosen it. And real careful over that area that doesn't have anything behind it. Really careful there. And you don't, you're not trying to be perfect here. Remember, we're hobbyists. This is not perfect work I'm doing. This is good work that will last a long time. I'm sure there is some museum curator out there that knows a much better way. Uh, but he went and got a PhD so he could determine what that way was. I don't have the benefit of that education. So I'm going to do the best I can with what I have and what I know. Okay, and on the, sec on the second pass like this... You want to spread out a little farther on the speaker so that you don't get build up in one spot where you have a real high spot in the speaker. Meanwhile, you're spreading it out nice and thin as you, as you venture out onto the speaker. Right? Nice and thin. Just so that you don't have a real heavy spot there and you don't want it to affect the way the speaker moves and affect the sound that it makes. There. That spot is done. I'm going to go ahead and do the other two spots and then... When I'm ready, I'll flip the whole thing over and we'll just dampen the other side and I'll show you how it looks. All right, I, um, I flipped it over and I did the same sort of thing to the other side. Just got the uh, material damp, the cone material damp. Same over here. Just got it damp. And... Um, it seems like, uh, you know, it looks loose. When you get it damp again, even if it has shrunk up and gotten tight, you can see that it kind of loosens it up again. But I'll show a picture when it's dry, and it'll tighten right up. So um, I'll probably do one more coat on this side. Um, I did a really, really thin coat on the, top, on the inside of the cone again. So... There it is. And once that all dries up, I'll put one more thin coat on each side and then I'll call this good. Some people like to do something to make these kind of look, you know, to make these match in color. Maybe paint them or whatever. Um, personally, I, I don't know. I, I've thought about um, putting on a little bit of color on the back side just so that it's not visible when this thing is put together and I'll probably do that but the less weight I add to this cone the better its response will be will I be able to tell the difference probably not but uh, you know why why push it so I will uh, I'll give this one more coat I will take a picture some video picture when it's all done show you how it, the paper tightens up and then uh, I think I'm about done with this whole console except for the assembly um, I may have to put a gasket on the glass to mount it in the escutcheon because the gasket material is all gone. But it looked like the escutcheon was holding it tight. And I've seen lots of them where those tabs are broken off because they get filled with too much to hold the glass. So I may or may not. I don't think it's critical as long as that glass is tight and it's not bouncing around. Um, anyway, I will show you a picture of this speaker when it's all dry and then we'll move on to the assembly. Here's the speaker ready to go. I finished the repairs and if you look really close you'll see that that uh, this material, this coffee filter material follows the contours of the speaker pretty well. You take your time and you work with it a little, little at a time like I said starting on one side and working toward the other with the brush and after the Eileen's Tacky Glue dries, you then apply another coat and you do several coats in a row, real light coats. And then I do a slightly um, heavier coat right at the end 
um, that I, not really heavier, but I'd spread the material out around the repair a little farther so that uh, there isn't like one lumpy spot. So it isn't really that I put it on heavier, I just used a little more material so that I could get out around around the uh, the repair a little further. Okay, so if you take your finger and you rub along and you just run it along here, you can't really hardly feel where that repair begins. And that's that's probably how I want it to be. It's still pretty flexible. I don't want to play with the speaker too much, but it's still very flexible. You can see it's it moves just fine because that's in the surround area and that's where all the flex is. Down here in this part of the cone, it re you really don't want it to flex much. It just moves up and down, you know. Um, but this part here, the, the surround has to do all the flexing to allow the cone to do that. So the cone doesn't really change shape much except for the outer edge. Now let's take a look at the back side. See if I can turn this speaker over without putting one of my meat hooks into it. To quote John from Arkansas. Again, terrific camera technique. There we go. On the back side, I put a little bit. This is more for strength than for looks. I put a really thin coat of speaker service cement. This is something that I get at, at, our, at Ray Elko here in town, but I imagine you can get this maybe even on Amazon. Made by MG Chemicals, speaker service cement. This is a solvent-based material, so it won't really remove that tacky glue when you apply it. And it looks lumpy when it's on there, but it's really flexible. So this, this one right here, I had a little bit of trouble with it, wanting to lump up. And rather than fiddle with it and damage that repair, I left it alone because that's really flexible and it's light. So you see it's, it's, it's quite flexible. It's not, it's not rigid. It's not going to cause distortion. And it doesn't add uh, a lot of weight to it, you know, so... I don't see any reason why that's going to be a problem. I, I like it to go on smooth, but I had a little trouble with it clumping. This one here went on a little bit smoother. And like I said, I don't do this for appearance, but this stuff adds quite a bit of strength without adding rigidity and without adding much weight. But I don't like to do the whole repair with it because, um, you know, again, you run into that, that uh, possibility because it's solvent-based and it dries fairly quickly. That it will want to clump up on you so i just do the last layer you know on on one side and i do it after the tacky glue has dried really well and um, then i can spread it on real thin so that's uh that's the speaker i've already played it in fact i played a record on it last night and it sounds really it's i played a record player through it and it sounds really pretty good I'm real happy with it. I played it at maximum bass and I, so I heard no distortion. So I think this speaker is going to work out great. Um, you know, I'm kind of torn on whether I should try to remove this, this uh, surface rust here or not. The thing is, that if I remove it, then it's just going to look all shiny and, and all scraped up. And I risk getting that material in the speaker and causing problems. So what I'm likely to do is just leave this alone. If I had reconed this speaker, then I would have uh, stripped this the, the basket and this uh, coil housing all down, you know, and painted it properly. But without reconing it, there's just too much risk of messing it up. So I think I'm just going to leave it be. This is not a total restore. This is a make a nice radio for this this uh, fella to play all the time. So uh, this is not something that he's looking for, and I think I'll just let it be. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. All right, we'll get back to the radio now. Back to the record player now. 